I've been uh, working on, on analyzing images uh, from UVs, and in this case, I've tried to, to work with uh, image mosaics from UVs and detect the cockroaches in it. But uh, let's see uh, uh, what we have uh, found out thus far. I'm interested in uh, extracting uh, what is known as weed maps from these images, so we get an idea of where weed plants are present in the field. And based on the weed map, we can get an idea of where weed plants are present and how many of them are present in the field. And using that information, we can better target the, uh, the actions to control the weeds in the field. So we can decide when to go out with a sprayer and in, in which regions. So that's the reason we are interested in, in these uh, weed maps. The approach I have chosen to use is that it's based on an assumption that the weed plants will both occur in the crop row and between crop rows, so they are not uh, only present in, in one of these two regions. This takes out the option of using a crop or row harrowing inside the, the concha if you want to use this method for formation where weeds are present because it only controls the weeds between the two crop rows. So the overall uh, approach will then be to detect crop rows in the image, remove these crop rows and vegetation that is in them, and whatever that is left of vegetation uh, plants out of position that is weed plants. So that's the, the overline. Uh, images have been acquired using uh, the UAV from uh, the University of Copenhagen, the, the hexacup over here, and it was uh, elevated to 16 meters when acquiring images. And the images were acquired with a uh, standard compact camera from uh, Canon that has produced some, some nice images. After we have uh, taken all the images, uh, they have been stitched together using a pitch 4D to uh, a 200 megapixel uh, water mosaic, which we will try to, to analyze. And to give a small idea of the resolution of this, I have uh, shaded a, a small or marked a, a small red uh, region up here, and if we zoom into that, you can see the resolution here. So we are able to, to locate individual leaves on the sugar beet uh, plants that are uh, present up here. It's still too coarse to get a, a nice smooth uh, boundary of each leaf, but uh, we can see that each plant has several leaves and you get a bit of information about that if that's what we're looking for. I think the resolution is about maybe a half to one centimeter per leaf. So, to do this analysis, if we go back to, to the mosaic, if I try to search for straight lines in this image, I'll be somewhat disappointed. Because if I try to, to draw a straight line along one of these crop rows, the crop row will not follow that straight line. It tends to deviate. Uh, if it's uh, a curved field, you have tried to, to follow the, the contour of the field or well, it's a, a defect in the assembling of this uh, auto mosaic. I'm not sure, sure on what's caused for that. Uh, but I kind of assume that crop rows are parallel lines, completely straight lines. So we need to handle that uh, somehow. And one approach would be to fit some kind of polynomial and adjust for this uh, waviness uh, along the crop rows. But I think that's um, at least it's a difficult approach, and I have tried to do something simpler, namely to, to take the entire auto mosaic, which I have shown a piece of here, and then split it into uh, smaller tiles that uh, are, are overlapping uh, each other, and then uh, analyze each tile one by one with the assumption that the crop grows in each tile consist of straight lines, because they cannot um, deviate that much inside a, a confined region uh, like, like this. So what we actually do is we first locate vegetation in the image by calculating a, an excess green uh, value and then threshold that. It, uh, it 
least with these images, it uh, gives a nice segmentation of the image. Then we um, try to locate crop rows uh, in that uh, image, and I have a, a video in a moment on, on actually how to do that. So what we do in the image is first to uh, segment it into a vegetation and background, then search for the dominant orientation of the crop rows uh, by looking at the, the hot transform of the, of the image. Then we scan across the uh, field with that known orientation. And uh, then finally we will remove uh, all the detected crop rows and what is left is I think we have time for continuing the work. So, locating a vegetation. And then we use a hot transform for um, uh, locating straight lines. And then I search for a kind of energy of the orientation of the dominant and the straight lines. After that, we locate the, the individual crop rows by searching for peaks in about the vegetation. So this process, so uh, this process can be repeated for each of the, the tiles, and by that way we can pose these uh, detected crop rows on top of each tile. So now we uh, take the process uh, backwards to have all these analyzed tiles combine them again to the original uh, auto mosaic. And I have then taken a, a, a photo from the, from the mosaic to, to visualize how the, the result appears here. First the vegetation, the detected crop rows. And to remove the crop rows, we uh, dilate them, that is, make them a bit uh, larger. So that they cover the entire amount of vegetation in each crop row. And the black regions that are left up here is the space between crop rows. And what is uh, seen here is a combination of the original map of vegetation, but only showing the regions between crop rows. So this is uh, the final uh, map, and we can see there is some, some infestation over here. And there are some regions up here where the infestation rate is uh, quite low. We can also try to uh, make some kind of emphasis on uh, where vegetation outside the crop rows are, are present. And it has been done by, by using the, the weed, weed map. And uh, places in the weed map where we have seen uh, weeds is a normal image, and uh, places we haven't seen weeds. That is uh, crop rows, for instance, or uh, places between, or yeah, soil in this case, uh, has been dimmed to half the mutation strength of, of the original image. So this takes some, some time to, to do, and uh, on a computer on my laptop it takes six, seven minutes to run <coughs> this uh, mosaic, extract each tile, analyze them, combine it. So in, in total about seven minutes, and during that we analyze well nearly 500 uh, tiles. Uh, I think I have shown you yeah, that given such an awesome mosaic, we can uh, expect a, a weed map by lo locating the crop rows and see what's uh, left between them. So. This uh, work has been uh, funded by the Green Development and Demonstration Program in uh, Denmark. So, that's it. What's the benefit of taking tiles, stitching them together, and cutting them back into tiles? I rely on here in order to take the parallel lines. Um, 
because only we look at one dominant orientation of rock mass deviation. And by making the auto mosaic in the first place, I can correct for cameras not uh, taking images straight down. Uh, so if there is a, a difference in orientation of the cameras, then they will be removed by the generation of the auto mosaic. Then we cut it off. Then we know the going that the photos will be parallelized when we expect the trial. Well, if you had an emu, so you could just do it mathematically. If you had an emu, so you could do it mathematically based on orientation. That would also be a, a way of doing it. So, so if you knew the orientation of the camera on the UAV and you could correct for it, yes. that would also be a All the most seeking pro uh, algorithms I used causes some distortions and uh, strange artifacts. Yeah. It's, it's not the, the perfect solution, but it, it seems to work yeah. well enough here. So, uh, thanks for that idea. Yeah. Do we have any preconceived uh, line area before passing the multiple line? Um, like either they are horizontal, vertical, or three separate lines. I mean, before the um, half trans, half transform. So at this moment, I have no information about orientation of the truck rows in the image. Uh, what is uh, done here using the, the half transform is that uh, the half trans or consists of calculating the uh, strength of all possible lines in the image. And then uh, I try to, well, the, the half transform is, um, makes an addition input, uh, uh, takes a higher input as an input, and then has an, what's called an accumulator space, where you have the orientation of protected lines in one direction, offset of that uh, by of the lines uh, with respect to the one common part of the field. <coughs> what is done here is then to sum up the intensity of the of these different offsets sets for a certain orientation. And um, before summing them together I uh, I square all the values. So if they squeeze together in that Get a strong response, and if they get scattered around, they get a, a very low response. So that's the way I have uh, determined this plot uh, output. And uh, using that approach, I usually get a very uh, significant peak that gives us the orientation of the plot output. So, that's it. Um, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your extensive answer. I, I just wanted to ask you three quick questions. More tinder for horizontal vertical line or uh, on the pictures, mm -hmm. but as you to be in certain specific uh, angle line. If I wanted, I could tilt this image 12 degrees and it would still work, uh, or 20 degrees or, or whatever. So there is no um, prior knowledge on the orientation of the top um, And all of this will be. Handled by the half trans transform or other techniques? Um, the, the half transform is uh, the base for doing this. And then I do some extra processing on the accumulator space from the half transform to detect this one or to determine the, the dominant orientation. And, then I'm, and uh, it has a resolution of, I think it's half a degree or one degree. So I can I calculate the angular response by one degree difference across all possible uh, orientations. Yes. Okay. I have a question about your commercial Um, 
probably a few of them. Um, I think I have chosen a value of uh, zero or a, a very low value close to zero. Uh, the excess green is uh, two times the green channel minus the red and the blue color channel. And if it's a neutral color, it will be zero. If it's green, it will be positive. And if it's red or, or blue, it will be negative. So uh, a, a value close to zero. And, and in this case, I'm Then I have issues. Yeah. Then I have issues. Um, so if um, if uh, the image is taken from exactly above, all the lines will be parallel, as they will be on the same line here.